Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to the channel and to another episode of Alt Archives. Today's episode, we are covering black milk clothing. This one was really interesting to research, so let's hop into it. Black milk clothing was started in 2009 in Brisbane, Australia by James Lillis. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Now, this website has an amazing about section and also blog section. So let's first talk about the history of James and his brand. James does an amazing job of cataloging his start to the business. So he said he would work odd jobs and was just really getting by. He stated in an interview that he would suffer from chronic headaches and he wanted a hobby that would get him away from the computer. So he saw a sewing machine in the store. I was like, why not? He said he basically had no money after that and the only fabric he could afford was nylon on lining. And what is nylon lining good for? Leggings. So he made a pair of leggings and asked his friend if they would model them for him. Several tweaks to the piece later, the friend actually offered to buy the leggings from him. Now James was like, wait, people are willing to pay money for the stuff I make? He would start saving money to buy more printed fabric and would go to sewing shops to learn more skills. He even went door to door to different shops around his area to try to sell his goods. Almost all said no except for one shop. Unfortunately though, after a week, the shop gave him his clothes back because none of it sold. He even tried markets, but said he would barely make enough to cover the space fee. At some point, he also made a blog and online store, and the internet was loving it. In-person physical selling wasn't working, but online sure was. Everyone said he wouldn't make money from it, because at the time, only big, well-established businesses were online. Time to prove them wrong. By 2010, he would open up his first Black Milk headquarters in Fortitude Valley. In 2012, they started a convention called Sharky Con in Las Vegas. This con was for devoted fans to get to show off the clothing that they bought, and to meet James in person and just overall have a great time. It was called SharkyCon because the fans were referred to as Sharkies. They would swarm the website and frenzy and buy everything that was available, which Black Milk says at some point <laughs> caused their site to crash for two days. SharkyCon would continue for many, many years to come and go all over the world. Fast forward to 2014. This was Black Milk's year, okay? The Tumblr girlies were riding the Galaxy hype train, myself included, and what better clothing item than Galaxy leggings? This was the year that really put black milk on the map. They really went viral. I feel like this was probably also the time I started hearing about them. I remember Alexa Paletti here on YouTube would make a lot of black milk clothing hauls and try on videos. I remember being so in love with their pieces, but I was a very Baroque high school student. I definitely could not afford that price tag. My parents would have definitely said, we have leggings at home, got a hot topic or something. As I was researching for this video, I was going through a lot of the blog on their website and it's just so nice. You can see the real passion and energy that James brings to his brand year after year. In all of my old archive videos, I don't think I've ever seen the creator of a brand be so dedicated 10 years in. Unfortunately though, James would pass away only a couple months ago on February 22nd of 2024. He got into an accident while on vacation and he did not survive his injuries. He leaves behind an amazing legacy that continues to be successful. All the info I gave on the brand's history can be found not just on the about page, but on this amazing blog post on the website called Celebrating JL. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a joyous read and is just filled with a lot of love. Now onto the meat and potatoes of the video. The clothes. Like I mentioned, Black Milk was mostly known for their leggings. The brand was described as geeky chic. Leggings with all sorts of patterns you can think of. Mermaid, skeleton, those faux suspender looking leggings. I vividly remember the Harry Potter collection. They would branch out and do dresses and bodysuits and such. And now of course they sell everything you can think of. They've done so many collabs with such big franchises and are currently doing a Dungeons and Dragons collab. Please j just take my entire wallet, okay? Take a kidney if you have to. I will take all of it. I only need one kidney. D, you know? Their sizes range from extra extra small to 2x prices. They are pricey. I remember way back in 2014, 2015 era, they were also like 50, 60 bucks for leggings. So the price has stayed relatively consistent. When researching, I was shocked to find that they only had a 2.7 rating on Trustpilot. We were doing so well. Ugh. I might have went down a small rabbit hole to find out why the rating was so low. I mean, look at that percentage. Yikes. For one, I found lots of people complain not only about the quality of the clothing, but the sizing being vastly inaccurate, saying the quality is just not what used to be. Here's the crazy part though. All those negative reviews aren't from just some one-time customer 
who didn't like their first purchase. These reviews are from people who have been buying their stuff for years. Loyal customers. They apparently switched to making cheaper quality stuff by using cheap Chinese wholesale fabric sometime around 2015 to 2017. The timeline is a little unclear. A lot of people don't think that now the quality justifies the price point. There's also a whole section on their website called Weed Major Clothes dedicated to talking about their environmental impact, their sustainability, and just generally where their manufacturers come from. They not only go into heavy detail about their manufacturers, but also that they don't support sweatshops and they don't use leather. They donate unused fabric, and there's even a whole bullet point about how recyclable and sustainable their mailer bags are. I will say that this transparency is fantastic. I love to see it. We really do not see it from enough brands. But I think the customer voices make it pretty clear that even though you have all of these systems in place, the quality is just not there anymore. You would think more money would equal better quality, but I don't know. This one was kind of a sad one to research. It was sad to see a company with what looked like a great core community behind it sort of just fall into the shadows and turn into some forgotten relic of the 2010s. And that is all I have on Black Mold. There was some other things that I found that I really couldn't find enough research to talk about. They had some scandals in the 2010s where their marketing was just kind of garbage and they made some really crude and crass comments using their marketing. I also saw people suggest that they use AI prints and I literally could not find a single thing to back that up. It's possible it could be happening but at least they aren't so blatantly obvious like Rogue and Wolf. But as always, let me know what you guys think. I'd really like to know if any past devoted sharkies are watching this video because I'd really like to know sort of the timeline of where the quality and care sort of dropped in the clothing. People were also saying that it got to the point where releases were happening so frequently that even like really good fans could not keep up with it. Because I'm telling you, there's people so dedicated that they would buy every single piece as soon as a new collection launched. And it got to the point where they were releasing like one a week. I'm getting Killstar flashbacks, <laughs> like. So it seems like a company that really just switched to sort of quantity over quality. And that's sad because I start sounding like a broken record. I really thought this one was going to be different when I was researching about them. I was like, man, this brand seems so amazing, so wholesome. I know, it's just the same thing. They do this shit for like 10 years and then they decide to get cheap about it. I feel like I got on a soapbox there. <laughs> but anyway, let me know down in the comments below what you think and also what other brands you want to see me cover. Yeah, as always, if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I post new videos out every week, so don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss another upload from me. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!